This is the Human Benchmark Test, also known as My Personal Hell. It's a group of eight different tests designed to study the strength and speed of the human brain. My goal was simple, get into the top 90th percentile of all eight tests in 10 days. I knew it would be difficult, nearly impossible, but to see just how impossible, I had to take the test. Uh, let's start with reaction time, I guess. Oh, I've, I've clicked to start, I was waiting for it to go. Okay, 200. Oh, that was better. That was worse. My average is 202. I did poorly. I am in the 52nd percentile. Let's go into sequence memory. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that was fast. Oh my, 77%, that's nowhere near as bad. This one, this one's gonna be bad. If I mess this up, I blame Ryan and Blue. I was doing so well until I wasn't. Number memory. Remember the longest number you can. Five, six, eight, one, six. And then add two ones. Nice, I'm not stupid. I am average. Eight, four, two. That's not right. Oh, I was so close. 35 per... What? Oh, honey, no. Verbal memory. You'll be shown words one at a time. If you've seen the word during the test, click scene. If it's new word, click new. Book binders, component, mains, Beamier. Damn it. 47.9. Okay, this is really bad. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, this one's just not happening. Oh, we're the masters. Maybe I, maybe I am a chimp. I bet I can get 95% though. That'd be cute. Visual memory. What the heck is this graph? That's a mountain range. Okay. Oh. Nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. 77.6%, that's not bad. Piping! This is gonna be really embarrassing. Here we go. Oh, how'd I do? 72%, honestly, that's better than I thought I'd get. <laughs> okay, I have some work to do. I only hit 90% in one of the eight tests, so I still had seven left to improve on in 10 days. I split the tests up into two main categories, the memory tests and the muscle tests. The memory tests are self-explanatory, and the muscle tests check how fast your brain talks to your hands. I knew the muscle tests would take a lot more practice over the next 10 days, so I started training with those right away. I spent the start of day one researching how to improve my typing speed. I'd already hit 66 words per minute, and I was pretty sure I could hit 70, but I didn't think I could get much further than that. Luckily, I already knew Joey's two typing red flags. Number one, Joey consistently has to look down at the keyboard while typing because he didn't pay close enough attention while training in computer class. And number two, Joey only types with two fingers. Yeah, I only use my two pointer fingers for typing. I know it's a problem, but it's what I'm used to. I used these two fingers to look up ways to help me type faster and discovered 10fastfingers.com. It's a simple website that lets you practice typing and records your progress over time. I started to practice typing without looking at the keyboard and recorded my progress over the next couple days. Yikes. Enough about the next couple days though. We're still on day one and I still have more work to do. I decided to practice chim tests so I could get a score above 95% simply for the bragging rights. It didn't take me long to get a score of 96.3%. Next I tried to tackle visual memory since my score was already almost there. After a lot of practice though I wasn't getting anywhere so I had to humble myself and talk to someone better than me at visual memory. Bragging Green Blue, Hello. how are you today? Alright, let's try this one. Wow, I did it guys. Shut up. Cause like here it's like an L. Mm -hmm. So you're making pictures out of the squares? I'm I'm more breaking it up. Like, that is a block, and then this is a block. It's so like, this is pretty easy, so I just mm -hmm. have to remember what's not easy, and then get what's easy. Gotcha. Like, that's a dog. A, where's the dog? Hold on. So your basic strategy is just to... <laughs> break it into break chunks. Break it into chunks. Whatever the harder chunk is, you focus on that first, and then just keep the easier chunk in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Never speak to me again. Oh my god, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, I so did not get that one. Okay, let's see how 15 is. 90%, let's freaking go. Well, that worked. I spent the rest of the night practicing typing and improving my score in both sequence and verbal memory. Wow. In one day, I cleared two tests off the board and significantly improved two more, I thought to myself. Maybe this will be easier than I thought. Why do I talk?
My goal for today was to conquer sequence memory. In my research, I found a video by memory expert Ron White detailing his strategies for a similar game called Simon. His strategy for the game was to associate each of the four main colors with a specific action or symbol. For example, instead of remembering the color red, he would remember roses growing out of his head. This is because our brains are better at remembering things when we put a meaning behind them. Sadly, I wasn't playing Simon. I was playing sequence memory with over double the possible selection areas. It was going to be a lot harder to associate things with nine identical gray boxes than four different colored rims. And since I was only at the 77th percentile with 13 points, I was probably going to have to hit at least 16 or 17 to break into the top 90. For some people, that could end the challenge right there. But what if I told you I already had a plan? And it all has to do with number memory. I knew that number memory would be the hardest of the five memory tests going in, so I started practicing it right away. The average human can memorize about seven numbers for experiencing any significant difficulty, but in order to break into the top 90%, I would have to memorize well over 10. After some research, I discovered some methods that memory experts use to memorize hundreds of digits at a time. Luckily, I didn't have to memorize hundreds. For the purpose of this test, I decided to use the mnemonic major system, which is basically a fancy way of saying, I turn numbers into words. Allow me to paint you all a picture. I'm going to show you a string of 12 random digits that you're going to have 10 seconds to memorize. You ready? Set. Go. Time's up. How'd you do? Did you get them all? Only remember a few? Even if you did manage to remember all 12, you might notice it's getting harder to remember it as time goes on. That's perfectly normal, don't worry. Let me tell you how I would memorize this number using the mnemonic major system. Basically, the system demands that you take all those numbers and convert them into consonants. For example, zeros would become S's, ones would become T's, twos would become N's, all the way down the line. Let's take that 12 digit number again. First, we take all those digits and convert them into their consonant forms. Then we would add vowels and spaces to turn those consonants into words. Now you just have to remember three simple words instead of 12 random numbers. You might be saying to yourself, that's kind of cool, but how does this have anything to do with sequence memory? There may seem to be no connection, but hear me out. Rather than applying random images to each of the nine squares, what if I gave them each a number? That way I could form words out of the squares that light up instead of trying to remember a random pattern. Bingo. Associating the blocks with numbers made the test so easy that I broke it in the top 90% within two attempts. Moving on. I spent the rest of the day too focused on verbal memory. I found a couple of high scoring runs and noticed they all had one thing in common. Everybody always said the words they got out loud. My take is that saying each word individually out loud helps to reinforce them all in your mind. I ran through the game a few times, but only improved a little. This is where things start to go downhill a bit. So every day after day one, all the way until day 10, I had a shift at work, which means that I didn't have nearly as much time to research and practice the tests as I wanted to. This is basically my way of explaining why I didn't get anything done today. I spent any downtime I had at work studying and practicing the mnemonic system, and I was actually getting pretty good at it. I think my coworkers might have been getting a little tired of me asking them to help me practice though. After work, I went home and tried to improve my number and verbal memory scores. Let's just say it didn't go well. Despite that, I think I figured out why I'm struggling so much with verbal memory. Verbal memory is all about rhythm, but once you play it a couple times in a row, all the words kind of start to blend together. Let's say you're 50 words into your fourth round of verbal memory and the word associates pops up. You stop for even a second and you're already done for. Now you're psyching yourself out thinking, have you seen associates in this round? Or was it in one of the last three rounds that you played? Or have you not even seen it at all? No matter what you click, whether you're right or wrong, you've already messed up your rhythm and you're destined to fail. The other piece of psychological warfare I go through is when my lives go down. If I'm playing verbal and I see that I lose a life, and I always see when I lose a life, I'm thrown off my rhythm and almost immediately lose. So that's why I failed verbal memory today. I'm getting better though, and I even improved in number memory too. I need to fully pass these tests soon though, or else I'm going to run out of time to finish all the rest. For day four, I chose to double down on verbal and number memory. I used all of yesterday to practice them, so I had to get something to show for it. I started off by attacking verbal memory. After about an hour of attempts using the new techniques I had learned, I managed to break into the top 90%. Four tests down, four to go. Next up was number memory, the final and hardest memory test to conquer. I already talked earlier about using the mnemonic major system, but I've gotten even faster with it over the past couple days. After just 15 minutes of attempts tonight, I got this. ML, um, malp, malp, nap, map, 32334, 32334, 32334. Um, malp, right? Malp, nap, map? Maybe? <gasps> oh my god, 93.5%. 12 digits in 10 
seconds. Number memory is in the books. Now that I had cleared all the memory tests, all that I had left were the muscle tests. Aim trainer, typing, and reaction time. One problem. I kind of stopped practicing them over the past couple days. But that's fine. I've got a whole six days to clear just three tests. How hard could that be? <laughs> and here's where things start to go downhill. I spent these three days researching and experimenting with the remaining tests. For this section of the video, I'm not really going to specify what I did on which day. Just know that all of it happened in this big three-day blob. Instead, I'm going to separate the three days by what I did with each of the three remaining tests. Let's start with reaction time. So. How does it work? Reaction time, a series of five back-to-back -back tests to see how fast your brain registers a change on screen. When the test begins, the user is greeted with a red screen and told to click as soon as they see the screen change to green over a random interval of time. The test averages your five scores to get your final results for reaction time. And what did I find in my research? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's actually a number of things you can do to help improve your reaction time. Number one, fix your dang posture. It helps make you more alert and aware of the screen change. Number two, be well hydrated, especially with water. Number three, and this is the big one, be well rested. That might be a challenge. There's probably a way to cheese the system here, but that's all I found in my initial research. I actually did try one night to go to bed super early and take the test well hydrated the next day. It improved my score, but not by nearly enough. Next, aim trainer. Click 30 targets as quickly as possible. Now you might think that since I've been such an active gamer all my life that I'd be pretty good at this one. Nope. My aim and speed are horrible. This was easily my worst test. I watched a lot of people playing the game to get a feel for their techniques, and all I can say is it looks a lot easier than it is. There are a lot of videos on YouTube all about how to get better at aiming, and they all boil down to spending time practicing. Some people spent whole months perfecting their aim. Problem? I only have a few days, but I was not going to lose this without putting up a fight. I had a few strategies up my sleeve that I had to try. Maybe I'm better at aim trainer on my computer, but what if I was better at it on my iPad? Okay, I'm at 494. Wow. So, am I screwed? Not yet, but I am going to have to spend all my time over the next couple days practicing aim trainer. I'm so happy I did this to myself. The third game I have left is typing. We are given a paragraph and have to type it out as quickly as possible. As previously mentioned, I have some problems with typing. I've spent some time over the past few nights on both 10 fast fingers and the test itself. My scores improved a little bit, but not by nearly enough. I tried to take the test on my phone because I know I'm a fast texter, but the human benchmark test was already two steps ahead. Well, here we are. Days five through seven are down the drain with little to no improvement in the three games, and I only have three days left to get in the top 90% of all of them. Here we go. I worked on all three tests on and off throughout the day, but I wasn't getting anywhere. I was desperate for help. Until... I had a bit of a realization. Why am I sitting here getting nowhere when I have a great group of people that can help me master these tests? And so, I went live. Um, my plan is, since I haven't really been able to force myself to work on typing or anything today, I'm gonna force myself by streaming it. After getting made fun of for my terrible aim trainer skills, I moved on to reaction time. And I was there for a while. Let's just say I spiraled a bit. That was until we made a breakthrough. The great thing about having a small audience is that they could be taking the test at the same time as me and we could compare results. Plus, our skills range all over the board on these tests. This, my friends, is how we discovered the tier system. The tier system is a way for the human benchmark test to group results into neat categories. What I started to notice while playing reaction time was that my percentile wasn't changing even when I got higher or lower scores. That's because in the tier system, ranges of scores are grouped together and put into single percentages. For example, if you were given a score anywhere from 450 to 400 milliseconds, you would be given a percentile of 57.1%, regardless of where you fall in that range. Your percentile only changes when you move on to the next tier, so your actual score doesn't really matter, just what tier that score falls into. In terms of aim trainer, I was going to have to get a score faster than 350 milliseconds to break into the top 90%. That wasn't the only discovery made today though. While we were looking into the tier system, Ruby was looking into reaction time, and specifically how much time there is between starting the test and when the green screen appears. Using a 90 beats per minute metronome, Ruby was able to discover that there would be anywhere from 5 to 9 ticks between starting and getting the green screen. Hypothetically, if I were able to guess correctly when that green screen would appear between that 5 and 9 beat range, I would get a higher average than I would if I were reacting normally. My reaction time score was already really close to the top 90%, so I only had to hit this in one of the 5 attempts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <gasps> okay, there's a chance. Okay, good. 
Good. Chat, as long as I don't get like a 300 in this, then I've got, then I've got 90%. Sixty-seven, 92.3%. God, I'm done with reaction time forever. Hi, YouTube video. A 92%. Would you look at that? Suddenly reaction time is done and in the books. I spent the rest of that surprisingly successful stream working on the typing test. We realized that because of the tier system, I would have to get at least 90.5 words per minute in the typing test in order to hit the 90th percentile. It's important that I specify 90.5 words per minute because if I hit just 90 words per minute, I'll actually fall down to the lower tier. But that 0.5 words per minute doesn't actually matter right now because I'm still stuck at 76. What's in plus 10? All I have left is aim trainer and typing, but I'm still far from finished with them. After a healthy amount of sleep on the night of day 8, I decided to kick off my morning by playing aim trainer. I kept myself well hydrated, maintained posture, and was somewhat well rested. I also had a new way of training myself to click targets at a faster speed. As I said earlier, I need to get a score faster than 350 milliseconds to break into the top 90%. Rounding a little, that's about 3 targets a second, every second, for 10 seconds straight. Which just so happens to line up perfectly with 180 beats per minute metronome. That's right folks, we're back to the metronome! I can easily hit 120 beats per minute on Aim Trainer, so I start there in my practice and increase the speed with every round. I can usually make it up to about 150 beats per minute before I experience serious difficulty, so I need to find another way to help me keep improving. Here's what I came up with. <gasps> Clicking the mouse while also moving it from one target to the next is too much for one hand to do and makes it more difficult to accurately hit each target, so I downloaded a program to change my left click button to the shift key so I could click it with my left hand instead. I'm in too deep. After working on Aim Trainer all morning, I managed to get a score of 374 milliseconds, which is actually pretty close. Sadly, it was one of my only sub 400 millisecond attempts of the entire morning. On to typing. Since the stream on day 8, I wasn't really sure where to take typing. I had already hit 76 words per minute, but I didn't think I could really get any further. I knew I could eventually hit 90 words per minute if I had enough time to fully relearn how to type, but I only had a day left. If I didn't figure something out, this entire challenge would be ruined. I had to think of something. And then an idea crossed my mind. The typing test provides you with one of several different prompts to type out, but there are only so many options. What if I were to memorize one of the passages word for word, so that instead of not having to look away from the screen, I didn't have to look away from the keyboard? Let's do it. <laughs> I chose to memorize the prompt about the three little pigs because it was the shortest one. Fine, Neil and his mouth began to water. Oh my god. So now this is where we get into the decimals, I think. Let's have a look. <gasps> there it is, folks. <laughs> Literally on my last attempt before leaving for work, I hit the top 90%. Well folks, with typing out of the way and day 9 coming to a close, we're down to the final day. And the final test. This is Aim Trainer. Well, here we are. The plan is simple. Get a score below 350 milliseconds by midnight tonight. First problem. I have work almost all day long. I had to leave for work today at 10.30 a.m. and didn't get back until 8 p.m. So I barely had any time to work on this score. With that context in mind, let's do this. I woke up early that morning after getting a decent amount of sleep. Well rested, check. I had my bottle of water next to me and drank frequently. Well hydrated, check. I even raised my chair a little bit to improve the angle my arm was at for optimal performance. Good posture, check. I made a last ditch effort to cheese aim trainer by playing it on my phone and actually did worse than I did playing on the computer. I was gonna have to do this for real. The only little bit of cheese I was able to pull off for the game was increasing the zoom size on my browser. This made it so targets were larger and easier to hit, with the trade-off of them being further away from each other. I was able to play for about an hour and a half before having to leave for work, with no improvements so far. I got home at 8 o'clock, with 4 hours left to beat aim trainer. I grabbed a water and a brisk iced tea to stay awake, stretched, sat down, fixed my chair, and loaded up Aim Trainer. It all comes down to this. All right, let's get to it. Seconds turn to minutes, minutes to hours. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. The score goes down, 390, 374, 362, but it isn't enough. I sit there haunted by the tick of the metronome. Tick, 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 tick. I click the targets, faster, slower. My finger slips, I refresh the page. My brisk is empty, my legs are numb. I sit there, hoping for the best. Clicking, clicking, clicking. Oh. 
Oh my god! Mm. 3.53. A mere four thousandths of a second away. I had put everything into that run. It felt perfect. But it still wasn't enough. The time ticked closer and closer and closer to midnight, but my progress stood still. Was this it? I had spent ten days, ten whole days, rewiring my brain. In just ten days, I was able to teach myself a new way to process numbers, turning them into words. In just 10 days, I was able to discover patterns in abstract material. In just 10 days, I was able to improve the speed of my typing by 30 words per minute. In just 10 days, I was able to learn how to memorize dozens of words at a time. In just 10 days, I reached the top 90th percentile in seven human benchmark tests. 10 p.m., 10.30, 11. As the clock continued to push forward, I couldn't help but wonder, what if this was all a waste. <gasps> oh my god. Eleven twenty eight PM. Thirty two minutes left. Ten days earlier, I had a question. Is it possible for me to push myself to reach the top 90th percentile in all eight human benchmark tests in just ten days? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is.